Hello and welcome to video lecture in sociology. Today we are going to discuss chapter 5 titled as Change and Development in Industrial Society from your textbook Social Change and Development in India. This chapter is broadly divided into four parts. The first part deals with the nature of industrial society. The second part deals with industrialization in India. The third part deals with job market and the fourth part deals with working conditions in India. Today we will continue our discussion on the first part of the chapter that is nature of industrial society. As you know industrial society refers to a society that uses technology for mass production in factories and it has a high degree of division of labor between workers in terms of skill and between management and the owners. In the previous lecture on this chapter we discussed about how industrial society developed in the west with industrial revolution and replace the pre-modern agrarian societies of the pre-industrial age. We also discussed about the difference between the industrial societies and the pre-industrial societies. As you know sociology as a distinct discipline emerged during that time. The classical sociological theories explained social change as a consequence of various social, political, intellectual revolutions in Europe such as enlightenment, French revolution, industrial revolution etc. The classical sociologist commented on the nature of industrial society in terms of its consequences and the causes. Their writings reflected a concern regarding changing nature of social and cultural fabric of society due to rapid industrialization and urbanization. This concern was more in a negative sense. For example, Weber talks of disenchantment, Durkheim talks of anomie, and Karl Marx talks of alienation. While the early sociologists saw industrialization as both positive and to large extent as negative, by the middle of the 20th century, the modernization theory perceived industrialization as inevitable and positive. Let us discuss why did this say so. In sociology, there are different theories or theoretical perspectives that attempt to explain social change in terms of what factors cause change and what are the consequences, not just economic but political and social as well. In this context, it will be useful to discuss some of the important contemporary theories of change explaining nature and rise of industrial society. Let us begin our discussion with modernization theory. Modernization theory, as the name suggests, argues that various societies are at different stages on the road to modernization, but they are all heading in the same direction. Modernization theory assumes that modern societies are characterized by a set of specific values. The West is an example of modern society because it exhibits these values such as rationality, bureaucratization, democratic institutions, modern science technology and factory production. According to modernization theories, the slow pace of development in the underdeveloped countries of the third world basically such as Asia and Africa is due to specific nature of the value systems that is developed in these countries for a long period of time. What is the difference between or what is distinct about this value system which is different from the value system of the modern or the western societies? Let us discuss about the distinct value systems of these two types of societies. Talbot Parsons argues that traditional societies are characterized by a system of ascription as against achievement. What is meant by ascription? In ascription, individuals obtain their identity and roles by who they are. For example, you belong to a particular caste by birth and cannot change it throughout your life. The caste in which you are born determines the kind of occupation you go for. This is the basic feature of caste system which is ascribed to you by the birth. But in modern industrial societies, achievement instead of ascription is valued. Individuals have to compete for positions on the basis of eligibility, qualification, competence and merit and they can change their status and position. Hence, modern societies offer a kind of environment in which people can grow, vertical mobility and horizontal mobility is permitted. Whereas, in traditional societies, ascription bounds people down. That is, they are not allowed to change their status or their position even if they have competence or qualification to do it. 
the process of modernization is seen as universal and the modernization theory states that the pre-industrial societies will eventually become modernized as the values held in the developed countries that is the modern values are diffuse and are universal in nature. Gradually, the pre-modern societies will imbibe these values and they will also become modern. In a similar way, Clark Kerr and W. Rostow suggest that there is a logic to industrialization and societies, that is industrializing societies, will inevitably become more or less like one another, no matter what is their current or prevalent social or political structures are like. This perspective on social change or explaining social change in contemporary times is called as convergence theory. The convergence thesis puts forward that no matter whatever social, cultural or political systems people follow, but advancement in technology and capitalist search for profit, that is industrialization, will result in social change bringing convergence in all aspects of social life. Technology is seen as an important driving force behind these changes that leads to convergence. This is the logic of industrialization that says no matter wherever you start from or whatever may be the fabric, social, cultural or political of a given society, they will ultimately become homogeneous or move towards a common form of culture or living that is propelled by technology, science and industrialization. The convergence theory states that differences between various types of social systems will gradually diminish leading to a common global culture characterized by industrialism and urbanism ultimately. Say for instance, the industrialized India of 21st century, say contemporary India, shares more features with China or the United States in the 21st century than it shares with the 19th century India. We have changed a lot over a century, but we look more like China and United States because of the advancement of science, technology, industrialization and the common global culture that is emerging as a consequences of these forces. Both modernization and convergence theories emphasize the importance of industry and technology in bringing about transformation in nature and structure of contemporary societies. Do you think it is true? If yes, to what extent? Can you think of examples and cases from your life where you think that cultures, languages and traditions have disappeared because of science, technology and industrialization? The logic of industrialization has swept all over the world. There is emergence of common global culture, which is the modern culture, or we can say modernization. The cultures, languages, traditions and customs are disappearing very fast. Again, let us see that how do you welcome people in your house when they come. The humble lassi has been replaced by soft drinks, or sweets have been taken over by chocolates. Culture influences the way people adapt to new products but in fact it is the opposite it is the new products which are influencing the cultural fabric of any given society think of more such cases discuss such instances with your parents with your family and see how modernization has changed the way people have been living their life in the last two three generations you can get a chance to discuss these issues with your grandparents or your parents that how they used to live how they used to connect to other people in the era prior to advent of modernization or as compared to the era of globalization now. As we just discussed that modernization and convergence theories along with other contemporary theories of social change, they emphasize upon the strong logic of industrialism that will eventually lead to emergence of common global culture where industrialization with a strong force and advent of technology will change or make the world look as homogeneous. However, modernization and convergence theories can be criticized for not recognizing the ability of people to resist change. In the contemporary times, you have seen there are many instances where people want to resist the homogenizing forces of modernization and globalization. Both these theories, modernization and convergence, they tend to underestimate the strength of different cultures and people's capacity to challenge change. There have been many instances where people do not accept the modern education or modern forces that are undermining the traditional practices. They assume as if people are passive recipients of values imposed upon them by the western industrialized developed countries. However, 
many developing countries despite rejecting these modern values are developing very fast from the field of management you can take as an example the american values the management practices are different from the eastern values or eastern management practices however both are successful in terms of managing the work wonderfully convergence and modernization theories also do not account for the structural inequalities that exist between the nation states at the global level we can discuss this further when we talk of global inequality inequality not in the sense between communities or groups or within small community of people it is the inequality that exists between the nations such as the developed countries the developing countries and the underdeveloped countries in the field of management we basically compare the eastern values with the western values the western practices of management are based on rationalization of work of behavior of culture or work practices whereas eastern values are more based upon cooperation and understanding with each other now such kind of difference between pre-industrial or industrial or traditional societies is evident in all aspects of life political cultural traditional or social industrialization is perceived as a great leveler it leads to greater equality at least in some sphere if in not all for example caste distinctions do not matter anymore in modern secular settings such as while traveling in trains or in buses or eating out in restaurants or watching movies in cinema halls you are sitting in this classroom not on the basis of your caste affiliation but on the basis of rational eligibility criteria that you are part of this classroom on the other hand traditional forms of discrimination may even persist in such rational environments such as in new factories or in workplace settings if we take example of indian society there is a caste class nexus what does this mean the high caste people have better access to opportunities and hence get better education and better set of skills thus they belong to high class so we can say there is a caste and class nexus and despite all forces of rationalization and homogenization there can always persist a kind of inequality in such equal societies which are characteristic of the industrialization or modern societies so we see there is a paradox on one hand industrialization modernization and lately globalization is seen as a homogenizing force and despite its effort to homogenize and emergence of global culture inequality in some form or the other exist we can say despite all its efforts ironically inequality is not disappearing as social inequalities are reducing in some aspects economic or income inequality is growing all over the world which we can see in terms of the income level of the developed countries per capita income of these countries and the per capita income or the income level of underdeveloped countries often social inequality and income inequality also overlap for example what we have just discussed we see domination of upper caste people in well paying professions like medicine law or journalism and the concentration of low caste people in low paying professions which require lesser degree of skill as compared to the skill or the professional level that a person requires for going into high pay profession to conclude let us summarize what we discussed in this lecture we started our discussion with understanding features of industrial societies briefly and discussed about the emergence of classical theories of social change around various revolutions in europe such as enlightenment industrial revolution and french revolution we contrasted the classical theories of social change with contemporary perspectives particularly modernization and convergence theory of social change both modernization and convergence share a view that world will eventually become similar yet we see that inequalities persist at global level at national level at local level and even within communities industrial societies are considered to be homogeneous societies however if we look at deeply in the society there are different forms of stratifications and divisions existing in the next part of this chapter we'll discuss about the process of industrialization in india and particularly industrialization after independence till then you can enjoy reading this part of the chapter thank you Thank you.